This is AP Precalculus Notes for Topic 2.4, Exponential Function Manipulation. All right, so the properties of exponents that you learned in algebra can also be used to manipulate and rearrange exponential functions into an equivalent form. So these are the three properties that I'm expecting you to remember from Algebra 2, and technically we did review them in Algebra 2 and they were first taught in Algebra 1. The product property, when I have the same base, I add the exponent, so it's m plus n. There are some examples right there. If I have a power to a power, I multiply the powers, and there are some examples right there. And if I have a negative power, that means I flip it to either the denominator, if I was originally in the numerator, or if I was in the denominator, if I had b to the power of negative n, I would flip it to the numerator. So negative power just means flip and make it a positive power. And again, two examples for you right there. So for these next few problems, I want to try to rewrite um, or to determine the horizontal transformations. And notice that it already told us that it's going to be horizontal. Let's see what's going on here. Whenever I have something um, next to the x, I kind of think of this as being in the parentheses. Anything that's in the parentheses with x is always going to be horizontal. It already told us that, though. And when I'm adding 2, this is going to be a translation. So a translation by what? So translate translate, and you do the opposite because it's right next to the x. We've explained that in the past. I don't want to cover it again in this video. You translate by negative 2. That's one way to say it, or another way to say this is you could say go left 2. All right, and B, notice instead of adding 2, we're multiplying by 3. Again, I'm kind of ignoring this base, this common ratio. I'm only asking what's happening up here uh, to x. x is being multiplied by 3. So again, because I'm right next to the x, this is going to be a horizontal. And did I write translate? I should have said over here a horizontal translate by negative 2. Oh, let me grab the right tool here. I want to be as technically correct as possible. This should be a horizontal translate by negative 2. And then for this one, this is going to be a horizontal. And translation is when we add or subtract. A dilation is when we multiply or divide. So this is a horizontal dilation by a factor. Normally, it would be a factor of 3, but because I'm on the inside, I take the reverse of that. It's not times 3, it's divided by 3 or multiplied by a third. And there's only one way to say that. It's just the dilation by factor of a third. Or you can say that... Um, I don't really know of a second way to say that. I'm just going to leave it like that. And then for C, again, this is a multiply or division up here. So again, this is in the horizontal direction. This is a horizontal dilation by factor. Normally, it would be uh, divide by 2 or multiply by a half. But because on the inside, I switch this around and just say by factor of 2. And then over here, this is again in the uh, right next to the x, so this is still a horizontal. Horizontal. And um, this is adding or subtracting, so it's not a dilation, it's a translation now. Translation by um, uh, positive 1, or you can just say by 1. Um, there is another way of saying this, you can say uh, go right 1. All right, so um, this is kind of cool. So we're going to go ahead and take another look at this problem, uh, example 1a. So it looks like this. This can be rewritten as um, going backwards with our properties of exponents. 4 and 4 are the same base. Normally, if I multiply and multiply, this is x plus 2, x plus 2, and now I'm just going backwards. And 4 to the power of 2 is 16, so this is really 16 times 4 to the power of x, which is weird, right? It's weird because now it's a number that's outside of the parentheses. It's, it's outside the x, so instead of being the horizontal direction, it's now the vertical direction. So check this out. This is, yeah, we already said, this is equivalent to writing this. So now instead of a horizontal translation, we have a and this is the keyword, a vertical dilation by a factor of 16, which is weird. It not only changed from horizontal to vertical, but also changed from a translation to a dilation. This is why you why it's important to know these properties of exponents. So, and this is true for every single horizontal translation of an exponential function. Every time that I have x plus h, it's really some number times that original b of x. This b of x is still the original, and I have that b of x still right here. The only thing that's going to change is now there's a number out there, a, and we're going to assume that a is uh, whatever this b to the power of h is. All right, so for this next set of problems, we have four problems down here. Oh, just three problems. And I want to rewrite this so I only have b to the power of x and just some number out front. So... Check out this first one. In the first one, we have a 2 to the power of x 
times two to the power of three. Again, I'm going backwards with those properties of exponents. If I have the same base being multiplied, I add the powers, which is what we have here. I'm just going backwards now. And this two to the power of three is the same thing as two times two times two. And we should have two to the power of three memorized, but in case you don't, it's two times two is just four. Four times two is eight. This is eight times two to the power of x. And that's the form that we're looking for, just some base to the power of x and a number out front. All right, kind of the same thing for b. This is going to be... 3 to the power of x times 3 to the power of negative 2. Again, I'm adding x and negative 2 to get x minus 2. And then from here, I need to simplify what is 3 to the power of negative 2. And this requires you to remember what to do with negative powers. This is the same thing as, and I'm going to write it up here, this is the same thing as 1 over 3 to the power of positive 2. Negative powers mean I flip. I take the reciprocal and make this a positive power. And 1 over 3 squared is 1 ninth. So this is really 1 ninth of 3 to the power of x. And this can be the same thing. You can write this in an equivalent form. You can say that this is 3 to the power of x divided by 9. Either one of these is an okay form. Um, one is not better than the other. It's just different perspectives. And then in part c, very similar. We're going to leave that 4 out front. This is going to be 3 to the power of x times 3 to the power of 2. Again, I'm adding x and 2, ignoring the 4 for a sec. So this 3 to the power of 2 is 9. And then 9 times 4 is 36. So this is going to be 36 times that 3 to the power of x. And there's our final answer. Excellent. Okay. So we can also use the power property. So if I have something that's b to the power of c to the power of x, I can re -re rewrite this just putting some parentheses in here. This is now saying b to the power of c, all of this to the power of x. I just kind of added an extra set of parentheses. While that is kind of lame and it doesn't seem uh, useful, watch how it's used in these following examples. Check out this function, 9 to the power of 2x. This can be rewritten just by adding some parentheses, 9 to the power of 2 to the power of x. Again, this is a power to a power, so I multiply 2 times x is still 2x. These are equivalent forms, but check this out. 9 to the power of 2 is 81, and that 81 is now to the power of x, and... There it is. It is 81 to the power of x, but if you're dyslexic, it's 18 to the power of x. Just kidding. Okay, so number four, which of the following functions is equivalent to this? And I'm looking down at the multiple choice. I see that there's a leading number of three or nine. I don't think the leading number will ever change. I'm, I'm leaning towards C and D. Um, how can I get a 16 in the base? I can get a 16 in the base if I were to square root 16 and get back to four. So check this out. If I do this, if I do... Instead of rewriting uh, this form up here, I don't. I think it's easier to use this form down here. Check it out. If I do the square root of 16 to the power of x, that's the same thing as 4 to the power of x. And that's what we started with. We have this 4 to the power of x. This 9 is not going to change. I'm just going to leave the 9 out here and never touch it. And it's going to be 9 here, 9 here, 9 here. Don't touch it. But watch this. Square root of 16, that's the same thing as 16 to the power of 1 half. Again, the index, this hidden index of the square root is a 2. That's why it's 1 over 2, 1 over 2 right here. And that entire thing is to the power of x. And because I have a power to a power, I can multiply those two. Half of x is half of x, which is x over 2. So this is 16 x over 2, and I still have that original 9 out front. And you can see this is clearly uh, 16 power of x over 2. That looks like c here. I was correcting my intuition. I'm guessing that that leading coefficient stays the same. And in fact, that's probably true for all of these. We'll, we'll see. Um, oh, that concludes the notes. I guess we're on to the worksheet now. Um, it is indeed the worksheet. Okay, so that concludes the notes for topic 2.4, exponential function manipulation for AP pre-calculus. Thank you for watching.